Welcome back. Friday edition of Racing Across America. We're going to wrap things up with Tom Gallo, Parting Glass Racing, also president of the New York Thoroughbred Breeders Association. And, of course, it is New York Showcase Day here on the eve of the Travers. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Ha happy to have you, and particularly to talk about New York breads. But, of course, a couple of wins at the meet. We'll talk Parting Glass as well. Uh, a little bit later on, but let's hit on the New York Bread Showcase Day. And as you're the president of the Breeders, uh, I'm group, wearing a different hat today. Let's, We're uh, promoting New York Bread. Well, let's promo the, the afternoon, which is a nice, nice day of racing. Absolutely, New York Breads. You start with an advantage, and uh, it's a great day of racing. It's uh, it was created uh, many years ago. Showcase Day was created by Bob Fierro uh, with an idea taken from uh, Maryland Million Day which is uh, a great, another great day for Maryland Breads, which was created by Jim McKay and Frank DeFrancis and the Manfuso brothers. And Bob Fierro came up with this idea. And now we used to only have it once in the fall, and now we have it once in the spring, once in the summer, and once in the fall. So it's a great day. It features New York Breads, which are really gaining ground and really getting a lot of attention, especially here at the Saratoga Meet. Um, speaking of New York breads and the great day we're going to have today, we've got actually four entered in the Brig races tomorrow. One in the Ballerina, two in the Forgo, and then one in the Travers. So uh, New York breads are really coming of age and really, uh, you really have to pay attention. Also, if you notice a lot of the open races, and if we didn't have the New York breads, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to have the large fields that are so popular with a lot of the handicappers out there, and they're, uh, you know, it's, it, they be, the races have become very competitive, and New York breads have, are, are right up there with the rest of the crowd. I remember the old days, and I remember coming up here and seeing Fiorito break through the gate for the Whitney, oh, that's right, get yeah. loaded back in, that's and a, win. And win, right, I was yeah. here for that. Les Hewlett on board, that's the right, Finger Lakes right, exactly, runner and right, jockey, right, right, uh, right. Fiorito, and that was... That was the old days as far as right. New York Reds. That was a shock. It's not a shock anymore, and you, you alluded to it a moment ago. Governor Malibu in the Travers, I had Dave Brennig on yesterday. He kind of likes Governor Malibu. Absolutely. So New York Reds are right up there with open company now. Uh, absolutely. And, of course, you know, with Funny Side and then our own commentator, a horse that we fold and raised on our little farm, won the Whitney twice and then came back and ran third. So they're making history all over the place. And uh, today's going to be a great day. we got a lot of large fields. Um, we've got some beautiful weather, and I think it's a great opportunity for not only the spectators, for, but for the handicappers to really, uh, you know, really make some decent money today. And uh, I think if you show up for the opener, you have the chance of seeing potentially a couple of horses that later on will be facing successfully open company. I think Syndergaard and Bobby on Fleet, both uh, as two-year-olds, have plenty of upside potential. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And we'll, I'm sure we'll have a ton of them later in the year uh, on the Derby Trail. And uh, hopefully everybody knockwood stays sound and keeps going up the ladder. And you'll see also some hard knockers. These showcase days are a lot of fun because it brings together typically big competitive fields, but also familiar faces. And it's kind of fun to see them face off time and time again. And that's what makes these days kind of fun. Not only that fact that you see them, but more importantly, the nice competitive fields. Makes for a good betting day. It does. And it's also real good for the breeders because the breeders of these horses that are really local to New York State can come to Saratoga and really have their own day and really celebrate some of the achievements that they've had with a lot of these good horses and be right there and as a breeder myself you know you deliver these babies and you raise them and they're sort of like your grandchildren and then all of a sudden you see them grown up and you know on the big stage and it really gives you a real great sense of pride and it makes you want to go and do it again why i don't know but it makes you want to go ahead and do it again <laughs> and uh they're on the big stage over here, obviously, in the afternoons and running in the races, but it's kind of a big stage as well down the street at Basic Tipton. And the New York Breds did very well, A, at the open, the select sale, but also the uh, there was a nice Uncle Mo, what, 450000 Oh, right, yeah, uh, absolutely. So by a uh, well. uh, local farm, McMahon Thoroughbreds, set a record, 475000 And actually, that sale, as far as a market maker throughout the country, that sale is probably the only sale that really has retained, you know, a, a continuous growth pattern, higher average each year. This year was down just a tad, but I think you'll see after all the sales are done that you'll always come back to the New York bread sale at Saratoga as one of the strongest sales with one of the strongest markets, you know, in the nation. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for, for breeders if you're just getting started and you're breeding to the right stallions and you have that right mare, if you can get into that sale, 
you know, you're going to have a pretty good shot of really, you know, uh, tr some good trade there. And we had Sheila Rosenblum on the show a week or so ago, La Labradad, obviously, a hot city girl, uh, Lady Sheila Stable and Linda Rice. And right. she was a big participant at the New York bread sale, but I talked to her when she was here. She likes the New York bread program overall, as I think a lot of owners do. You know, you, 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 you I mean, toss the, you the phrase I mean, out there. You start with an advantage, but exactly. it's just become lucrative for folks on both sides of the game. I mean, from my standpoint with Parting Glass Racing and, of course, being a New York breeder, I specifically target New York breads because, you know, instead of running against the pool of the whole pool of 21,000, you're running against the pool of 1,600 for essentially the same money on the same stage. It makes sense, especially for new people just getting into the business. It's, it's, it's risk management, and I think if you're buying New York breads, Naira has been very helpful and very cooperative with creating a gigantic stakes program, $2 million two-year-old stakes program, $8 million stakes program overall, plus the restricted races, the restricted stakes program. There are a lot of opportunities for a new person, if they want to get started, to hit the ground running, essentially, and have a great chance to really break even or make some money because all you do, you know people come into this business and they think I gotta have a champion I have to have a, a horse that's gonna win a lot of races with New York Reds you really don't as long as you have a consistent horse that's hitting the board on a regular basis a second third a second third a fourth and a win you'd be surprised you're already over a hundred thousand you've made your nut for the year and now you can really have some fun yeah and that's fun's what it's all about absolutely uh, i pulled up your twitter feed uh, yesterday a lot of pictures of you giving tours on the back stretch oh, so yeah. up here at saratoga i've said it many times before it's great to be in the winter circle but part of it's just the social aspect and then the mornings over here with the parting glass absolutely books. and not only that it's 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 really giving people an idea of what goes on and and like i had a small group today they've never been back here been to the races the guy's grandfather brought him to the races way back in the 40s and the 50s, had no idea what went on on the backstretch and what it took to prepare for the races. And then it allows people to really get up close and personal with horses, with the trainers, and see the jockeys and everything. And they have a whole different perspective of the amount of preparation and the amount of transparency that we provide to the betters in the afternoon as far as providing a sound horse, providing the right horse, the horse we say it is, and then putting on a real, um, you know, legitimate show so betters can bet with confidence and, and fans can cheer with confidence. And, uh, again, if you're, if you're interested in potentially a partnership, uh, talk to Tom, go to the Parting Glass Racing website because it's a great group and they have a lot of fun. And I can verify that because it was, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago I'm walking out, headed to my car at the end of the day thinking, where will I go for dinner? I hear, hey, Seth. And I look in the party tent in the backyard. It's Tom Gallo and all the parting glass folks with right. the annual pig roast. That's exactly right. I didn't Our have to go anywhere roast. for dinner. It was That's great. That's exactly right. In the festival tent, the, 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 the um, participants, the members and the owners, they bring their families. They spend a full day at the races. We have lunch. And then after the races, have a pig roast. You happen to be lucky enough to, to come <laughs> by. So good for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad we got your attention. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And, and, and it's Saratoga, so it's always a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, it was the, everybody was having a great time. A band, the pig roast, and so that's yeah. all part of it. That's all part of the package. But, again, Winner's Circle is what it's all about. You've had a couple of stops there with Parting Glass at the meet. We're going to watch uh, August 3rd, number one, Alabama Bound. We talked about the New York Bread Program. Alabama Bound breaks her maiden here, running for, oh, a purse of $73,000. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. And I think after that, this the, the guys can also pull up. We have the... Uh, winter circle photo as well but a pretty nice performance number one alabama bound for parting glass racing absolutely so uh, it was she ran on wednesday she's coming off two very hard fought seconds where she got nipped at the wire twice so she really really deserved to win she had everything set up just right she's a very smart filly with tactical speed she got out of the gate was able to relax and then the rest is history. It was a crowd, fab, eh? absolutely fabulous, <laughs> fabulous crowd. And you know me, people say, whoa, are they all the partners? I said, no, not really. But when we win a race, I say, bring your yeah, friends, yeah, bring yeah. your family. How many times are you going to be in the winner's circle, the most expensive real estate in Saratoga Springs? Not many. You know, not many. So yeah. when, you, when we do win, I, I think it's really a, really a fun time to, to really celebrate. And this is a great way to celebrate. And then... That Sunday, then we, we, we have the stretch. Oh, you there. do! Oh, fabulous! Uh, Cliffs of Dover, the number eight horse, is going to get it uh, done in here. We're getting through the uh, N1X condition, 
Cliffs of Dover will again be the number uh, eight horse in here. Luis Saez on board. He was also on board uh, Alabama Bound. Tommy Bush trains both of those. Uh, talk a little bit about Cliffs of Dover. Getting well, Cliffs of Dover. Win for you up well, here this this was his first time off being gelded, and and he was a very very rough horse to manage. He's a very tough horse to ride. He won down in uh, in in Gulfstream, and then we just couldn't figure it out, and we and and we changed all kinds of equipment. And then we did the ultimate equipment change, which was gelding him, and he responded beautifully, and he actually settled a little bit. We ha actually had a jockey get off him and say, I'm not going to ride this horse anymore. He's going to kill me. <laughs> Seriously, down at Gulfstream. In fact, I think it was the race he won because he was just so tough to try and throttle and handle. But, you know, gelding him really settled him down, and, and now we, we, you know, and he went in the right direction, thank goodness, because... <laughs> If he didn't win this race and you already took him off, oh, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, put him yeah, back yeah. on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, also wanted to pull up, because, uh, again, I went to the Twitter feed. And this is nice because it's become an issue in the, in the racing game for the past few years. But you had a nice little horse that ran for you over the past few years called Kid Blast. 26 starts, five wins, four seconds, seven thirds. So a nice career for Kid Blast. But, as I saw with the Twitter picture, the greatest nice second thing, career. It's the greatest thing. Yeah. We get to see him every day uh, in the post parade. Uh, Al, who's uh, Bruce Levine, trained him, and he's a beloved horse. I mean, you know, when you race a horse over an extended career, people get attached. Yeah. And then when you retire him, it's always like, oh, my God, what are we going to do with him? Where is he going to go? You know, blah, blah, blah. And you want to stay in, in touch with him. This is the best of all worlds because the owners get to see him almost every day in the post parade. Uh, Bruce Levine's, uh, Al rides horses regularly for Bruce. Al had his eye on the horse because he always got on him in the morning. And uh, Bruce presented it to me and I said, oh my God, this is perfect. And now he's out, and for him, from the horse's standpoint, he's out on the racetrack every day. I think when people are applauding, they probably think <laughs> they're applauding for him, you know? So he's happy. He's well-mannered. Al's great about it. Like, we had a horse in, in the 10th race the other day, and Al knew that we would have a big group there, and he brought Kid Blast into the paddock, and everybody was able to see him. It's, it's, it's a heartwarming story, and, and it couldn't have ended any better. Yeah. And we know he's getting the best care. But the main thing is, you turn on the Naira feed, there he is. Yeah, when, you know? I, when I saw that on the Twitter Fantastic. feed, I thought it was a good story. Because, again, has a nice second career for a horse that, that did very nicely for your oh, group yeah. as well. Uh, any spots coming up in the last uh, 10 days of the meet for Parting Glass? I think so. Well, there are two horses that I manage. Parting Glass is pretty much done, but there are two horses I manage, one for Niantic River Racing and another one for Tom McCabe that I think we're going to be entering for Wednesday. Okay. I think they're both live. Khaleesi Cat. Who's in, uh, they have the starter allowance as an extra. They're, I hope they bring it back for Wednesday. She'll be live because she got shut off and boxed in in her last race, and she was ready to win. So I think she's going to be live. And then a filly by the name of Aussie Awakening who's coming back after some uh, throat surgery. I think if she gets into the maiden 40, I think she's going to be live. Hopefully Wednesday they both get in. All right. We'll be looking for those. Obviously success already in the meet with a couple of wins. Uh, for Parting Glass Racing. Oh, and I'll ask you before you go, I don't know whether you put the fall schedule together yet because Thursday nights at the Parting Glass during the summer, it's Andy Serling, obviously, but I know during the year I've been on the panels uh, leading into uh, we're gonna, we're gonna be Thursday calling nights you, a lot of we're times. We're going to be calling you for our big Breeders' Cup so extravaganza. Will that be the next meeting? It, I think so, the next big okay. meeting. We'll do a, 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 we'll do a Saturday morning on the backstretch at the Oklahoma track and get people a big group on the back stretch and go around and do confirmation gate clinic things like that and see some of the horses that we have and then October we do our big breeders cup handicapping extravaganza it'll be the Thursday before the breeders cup the day before the Friday races hopefully you're in town and hopefully you'll yeah, be able and, to join. Yeah and we'll us. remind people because it's a great way to a, it's, it's a meeting of the parting glass, folks, down at the parting glass here in the city, but I know you do it be on a Thursday a lot of times before. Uh, right. Open to the public, races, it's open or, to everybody. And I wanted to add that in. Yeah, and the parting glass is down there, but it's a great way for uh, people who want to learn a little more. You go down, you get the handicapping of a big event, but you can learn more about parting glass. Exactly, well. exactly. But and as it's I a lot say, of fun. if people see you around the track, they can ask you, they can go Absolutely. to the website as and well the first for more information. And the first Guinness is on me. <laughs> Can't beat that. First pints on me. Can't beat that. <laughs> Parting Glass Racing, local partnership. Always like to root for the locals. And if you're interested in maybe uh, getting a little piece of a horse, check out the Parting Glass Racing website. Tom, appreciate the visit. No problem. And cheer for those New York Reds tomorrow on the all big right. day and today, all day today. Should be fun. Thanks all right, much. we'll take Thank a quick you. break. When we come back, we'll wrap it up for Friday. Stay tuned.